Hey, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for March 6, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and our audience. Thank you for coming today. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you'd call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Oh, sorry, you switched? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix that. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Well, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Lord, we thank you for the, for the city and we pray that you be in this meeting and let thy perfect will be done. Please keep that in mind and upon our citizens, our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Should we need this? If I open it, I mean, no, I'm going to get it. All right, I'll need action on the council minutes for the February 21st, 2023 meeting. So moved. Motion by Mr. Robaugh. <clears throat> Second. Second by Mr. Bond. <laughs> Council, any discussion on those minutes? Ma'am? Um, I wasn't here, but yet I voted on the three separate items. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. Which ones were they? Um, I just said five the action on the minutes, um, executive session, and adjournment. Oh, okay. I will delete your name off of there then. It's so it still says five zero, but I put you in there. I probably did it for Cook too, just because I out of habit. Well on the executive session you didn't have Rudwald and on the adjournment you didn't have Cook and I didn't look real close to see who you didn't have on action on that. There. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm correcting it right now. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, Ma'am, and I should not be on there anywhere either, just in case. I didn't see me anywhere, but. <clears throat> okay. You you were there, right? Yeah, Cook he was there. Was there. I Lindsay, was me that was, was Okay. There. Yeah, you're not on there. I just had right. Peggy in. <laughs> okay. I got it. Good? I think so. All right, and you call for the vote when you're ready. Thank you, I, Deputy Garmin. The second was Bond, correct? Correct. All right. Councilwoman Eggleston. Abstain. All right. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Abstain was the president. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. <laughs> With the changes. Thank you. And Councilman Bond. Yes. All right, that passes five zero two. Right, thank you very much. And dropping down to communications, Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you. So uh, what we have for on the communications tonight, we actually got three action items here, and three items to accomplish. Uh, so the first, we'll be doing a Clark County uh, Land Bank Habitat for Humanity, and myself will be doing a presentation on uh, four home builds on a portion of the Madison Street School property. Then we'll go into a BZA hearing for 108 short drive and then charter review discussions. So we can start off with the presentation. So let me make myself get over here. So we'll have the presenters stand up the podium here. And I can do the slides. And then when it's my turn to come speak, I'll just have someone come up here and slide for me. So who we have with us tonight, Ethan Harris, is he the director of the yeah. director of the Clark County Man Okay. He is out. He was not able to make it today. So in his place, we have uh, Dirk Lokovich Van Gore. Dirk, Dirk is good. Thank you. Thank you. He <laughs> is a grants manager for Clark County. And we also have Norma Piazzi okay. and Dave Mountair with Half Path Humanity. Thank you. As uh, Randy said, I'm here for uh, the Clark County Land Bank, formerly the Clark. Uh, County Land Reutilization Corporation. 
known as the Land Bank. Uh, some of you folks have seen me in my other part of community development with the various grants that we've been obtaining together with Randy for the city of New Carlisle. But uh, tonight is about a land bank project. Uh, so the Clark County Land Bank uh, cons consists of a staff of six. Uh, Ethan Harris is uh, the executive director. He's also the director of the Department of Clark County Community and Economic Development. Uh, we have project coordinator, grant manager, myself, fiscal officer Nancy, uh, assistant fiscal officer, and a secretary of the board, Annette. Uh, we also house uh, five other divisions in the department, in addition to the land bank. Most of you know us quite well, uh, building, planning, zoning, finance, administration, and, and development. Uh, so what the land bank does, we do a lot of different things. We take tax forfeited properties to the state that have been given up by every other uh, entity, uh, whether it's the city of Springfield or the county auditor, et cetera, et cetera. They're officially forfeited to the state and we try to make a better economic use out of them. Here, just a couple of examples from, I think, 2017 in New Carlisle, uh, tax forfeited abandoned properties that were blight and uh, purchased them. You can continue on to the next street, resold them to somebody that was interested in fixing them up. Uh, that one's on Ross and Place. Next slide. Uh, and then the new owner, you know, has uh, rehabilitated the house. There's another example after this. I think it was on uh, Prentice, yeah. Again, another uh, forfeited and uh, blighted property. Um, purchased it, uh, found a new owner for it, new owner fixed it up. You continue on, Randy, through the next slides. Shows the final product. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of the projects that the land bank has done here in the city of New Carlisle. Uh, next slide. So a couple of months ago, the Clark County commissioners very generously and graciously uh, gave to the land bank a million dollars of their ARPA funding. And uh, our vision for that, uh, that Ethan and I had been talking about for some years is whether we would able, be able to get a sum of money from some source, we didn't know ARPA would even exist at the time, uh, to kickstart uh, a, a project that would build uh, new homes, uh, affordable, uh, good homes for uh, medium income people in Clark County that would otherwise not be able to become homeowners. Um, under ARPA, we're able to uh, build homes and sell them to families that are up to 300% of federal poverty guidelines, and we'll go through that in just a minute. Uh, income qualified households that would purchase these new homes uh, would purchase them through a conventional mortgage from an accredited uh, lender, perhaps, you know, a Park National Bank or one of the local banking institutions which means that they're going to have to be mortgage qualified by that bank. Um, down payment assistance grants may be possible uh, for some of the families, depending on their need. Uh, a lot of families in the middle income ranges have not been able to save up enough money to purchase a house at today's market prices. So a down payment assistance grant uh, satisfies two things. Often it qualifies them for a mortgage with that commercial lending institution. And secondly, it, it enables them to purchase a house uh, when perhaps they didn't have sufficient down payment uh, with the bank uh, to qualify for that mortgage. Uh, that mortgage would be secured by a second mortgage held by the Clark County Land Bank. Um, and just moving on then, Randy. So we've proposed to uh, Randy and his team uh, the front-facing uh, part of the old Madison School property that you remember uh, we demoed a few years back. And it would uh, break up into four standard 70-foot lots, the same as the lots in the neighborhood, and one uh, road right-of-way for future access that the city would retain uh, to the remainder of the property. Uh, next slide. And then just quickly, uh, under the ARPA program, 
the uh, families that would qualify for income would be up to a household of four at $79,500 per year. Um, family of three would be 65,880. Family of five is 93,120. Now you can see from those income lines that they're actually fairly lenient, but yet we know that many people in an income range of 65 to 70 thousand dollars at today's housing prices plus the seven percent interest rates that are being charged can simply not afford you know to purchase a home in clark county so that's the goal of the program is to create new homeowners uh, to bring that property value into the communities where they're built uh, and to, to create uh, you know new great efficient attractive housing for clark county families that's the ultimate goal of the program uh, you know when you think about that we have a lot of friends in that category uh, school teachers especially younger generation school teachers sometimes some of our first responders uh, many other people that we know in our small communities that are seeking and have perhaps for a long time wanted to be a homeowner but just have not been able to get there because of the income range that they're in. So I'll leave it at that. I think uh, we've all, oh, some examples. Randy, you can just click through these. These are just uh, very quick examples of some of the types of houses that would be built. As you can see, they're very attractive, energy efficient, modern homes, uh, three to four bedrooms. Uh, architecturally they would match with what else is in the neighborhood continue Randy and then one more and those are just examples so uh, the final designs on these plans would would still obviously uh, go before your planning commission and things uh, before that they were approved <clears throat> Hey, uh, my name is David Malcolm. I'm the development director at Habitat for Humanity of Greater Dayton, also a Clark County resident. Um, excited to be here. Uh, we were we met with Dirk. Well, it's probably been a year and a half or so ago, a year ago, and uh, he talked about you know some funding being available to build in Clark County, and we've kind of been looking for the right opportunity of where that could land, and uh, this opportunity came up, and Habitat was really excited about possibly partnering with the land bank in the city of New Carlisle to build uh, two of the four houses mentioned in Dirk's presentation uh, as Habitat for Humanity houses. So um, I know a lot of people probably have heard of Habitat for Humanity, have heard of uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, one of the people who is most uh, uh, you know, kind of famous in our program. But I do believe that most people don't really know how we do what we do. I think people have heard of Habitat, but when, they, when I talk to people about Habitat, a lot of times they say, well, you know, they maybe that we give houses away or we find people that need a house and we, we kind of hook them up with it or something. Nothing could be further from the truth. Habitat for Humanity sells houses, uh, and what we do is we sell them for 0% mortgage payments, 0% interest mortgage payments to hardworking families that earn the opportunity to purchase those homes. So um, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute maybe about our family program or what we call it our partner family program. Um, in order to qualify and to be successful in our partner family program, uh, our partner families who are working for the opportunity to purchase their Habitat house need to complete a minimum of 275 hours of sweat equity uh, with us building their Habitat house as well as Habitat homes for other families. Um, uh, if you're a two adult household, uh, that doubles. So now you have to do 550 hours. We call it sweat equity. It's really volunteerism on the uh, on the projects on the on the Habitat home build. So that's one of the qualifications. Another one, as you can see here, we do an extensive um, education program for our families to get them ready for uh, the process of becoming a homeowner. So you can see on the screen here, we do um, an eight-week money skills class. We do consumer credit counseling. Next slide. <coughs> Um, community involvement, legal issues. We do a four-week home maintenance class. It's really popular, te teaching people how to take care of their homes, how to troubleshoot, how to make sure the outside of your home is, is well-maintained. Um, community involvement, nutrition, wellness, really trying to develop um, you know, 
great community members, not just somebody who's gonna live in their house, but it's gonna be active member of their community when they purchase their house. Um, our homes are sold for uh, uh, the appraised value minus $1,000. So we have an independent appraiser come in, say, hey, that house is worth X number of dollars. And then that's what we sell the house for with that 0% interest mortgage. We hold that mortgage at Habitat for Humanity. The, the very small principal payment that comes in each month to pay that mortgage goes back into our program so that we're able to build more Habitat homes uh, throughout the community. We've been in existence for 40 years now, um, and uh, we had the opportunity to, to expand into Clark County about, about a year and a half ago. So we're really excited to be here and, uh, and serve this community. So with that, I'll turn it over to Norm, our executive director, for some additional information. Thank you, Dave. And thank you. Um, so Dave mentioned that our affiliate's been in, or been in existence for 40 years. So 1983, we're really excited about that. And in our 40 years of existence, we've built or renovated 310 new houses. So it's something that we're very, it's, we're proud of that, but also with the need for affordable housing, we see that we need to do more. So we're, we're excited about this opportunity. Um, so we serve Green, Clark, and Montgomery counties. And some of the examples of the kind of homes that we build, you see a couple here on the screen, but also in your packets. And the other thing I wanna let you know is in your packets, there's some pictures of actual houses that we built. Because we can show a picture of what we're going to do, right? But I want, to, I want you to know that what, we, what, we, what you see is what we build. Um, the other thing I want you to notice on those uh, pictures is that we also made a commitment probably 15 years ago to make sure that the homes that we build in any community match the architecture and style of what's in the community. So, and as, as Dirk hinted to, you know, when we build here, we want, we will make sure that the houses look like the houses that are there, both in style, um, we consider them very well built, so they are all Energy Star rated, um, very energy efficient, it just makes it more affordable for the families, better for the community, and better for the environment. Um, so partnerships like this uh, have been a big part of how we've grown. Um, you know, we look at New Carlisle as a, as a high-end community, um, for the types of families that Dirk mentioned too. So for families, for workforce families that are working for, you know, the, the toprays that are out there, for the restaurants that you eat in, for the businesses that you run, right? So it's families that need to have a decent place to live. This is, this is how we make them affordable. And the schools here are awesome. So we have partnerships with other, or other municipalities like the city of Kettering, city of West Carrollton, city of Huber Heights, um, and West Carrollton as an example. We started our first house in West Carrollton in 2004, began with a meeting just like this. Since then, we built 15 houses in West Carrollton to a tune of about two and a quarter million dollars worth of real estate value. You know, so thinking as a, as a you know, community, so that, added, that adds about $60,000 in tax, real estate tax revenue to their tax base on top of, of course, you know, employment tax and then all the other, you know, the, the monetary value it adds. So we feel that it's, it's, a, uh, it's great for the communities and we take properties that may have been, may have sat vacant for years, other times abandoned properties and put those back into productive use for the community. So. Um, with that, I just want to thank you for your time and your consideration for this project. Like I say, we would love to be uh, a partner of the city of New Carlisle. We appreciate Randy's um, uh, help in you know, helping to put this together, so we, lo we look forward to it. Questions, we'd be happy to answer now or at any time. We know you have an agenda, so however you'd like to uh, pursue that. Well, thank you for coming, gentlemen. Thanks for your time and your information. Council, do you have any uh, questions or comments you would like to go over? Mr. Roadwell. Hmm? So just, I mean, just to be clear, so I'm, I understand this. You guys want to build two, and then the land bank will build the other two. Yes. Okay. Let, me, right. let me explain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for the past year, Clark County Community Development, that's my other hat, mm -hmm. <laughs> has been implementing the community housing uh, improvement and preservation program. 
Now, about two-thirds of the recipients of CHIP assistance have actually been in the city of New Carlisle over the past year. You probably are aware of that. And one part of that overall CHIP program is $60,000 to support Habitat building two homes. Okay. Until now, we didn't know where those two homes could be. <laughs> so our vision is the four lots on Madison Street uh, would first go to the land bank, and then two of those lots from the land bank to Habitat, who would build two Habitat homes, and consecutively at the same time, the land bank will build two other homes. Okay. So there'll be four homes under construction on the lots at the same time, just that Habitat will be going through their homeowner selection process and build process for their homes, will coordinate together we have envisioned some cost savings together by doing all four, and the land bank will be publicly tendering and bidding out the construction of the other two homes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abel. <coughs> Mr. Lindsay. A uh, question for both of you, I think, Habitat and the land bank. Uh, will all four of these homes resemble one another? As to the properties around, I know the Habitat said they would, are you yes, I think you saw in some of the, I'm sorry, I spent 25 years in construction myself. <laughs> so I think some of the examples I gave to you are mm -hmm. similar in either the traditional or the craftsman style. And that's mm -hmm. probably along the lines of what you could expect. But yet, you know, inside that traditional exterior would be a very modern, you know, highly energy efficient home. Yeah. And, I, and I would, when, Mr. Lindsay, I would say that we would we would work with your zoning planning and zoning oh, absolutely. just to make sure <laughs> right i mean so anybody can say we're going to build these new houses I'll, I'll tell you this from our experience habitats experience what we feel is most successful is when people drive by these the new houses and they go wow those are nice new houses you know we want to, we want them to go that's a habitat house because they don't know it right. we've, we've done things in the past to our own detriment to where we built the wrong house at the wrong, in the wrong place, and people go, oh, that's a habitat house. You will not. Like I say, we want it to match the, what the character of the neighborhood, and our commitment is, is it will. Okay, thank you. Uh, you both have mentioned that the homes are going to be energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what your opinion of energy efficient is? Uh, yes. I think mine might be a little different. So, so in your packets, there's, a, there's actually a, an example of a HERS, H-E-R-S rating, which is part of an Energy Star rating or so. We have a certified energy rater come out and number one, help us with the design, inspect the home during the process, and then do a test at the end where they, where they actually evaluate the air leakage on the house, the performance of the HVAC system, and the entire envelope. And so the one in your packet, I think we, re we received a 63 HERS rating, which means that it's 50, no, I'm sorry, 37% more efficient than the average new home built today. And so what our homes typically rate about 55 to 65 on, in the HERS ratings. So that's pretty, we, we feel that's pretty good. Our habitat does not build zero energy uh, homes, if that's what you were going for. Um, that's a challenge, I think, for many families to maintain and live with throughout the years. So that's not somewhere we go. We build okay. permission. Right. I was just curious as hmm? to, to those questions. Sir. And the land bank built homes would meet that same standard. Okay. Thank you, sir. The gentleman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Baum. Uh, so appreciate you guys coming, by the way. Um, you went through the qualifications, or maybe the gentleman back there did, for the, for the habitat homes and how you kind of counsel and coach the people yeah, through the very, It's not easy to buy a habitat house. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a two year process for us. Is the same criteria the same for the land bank uh, folks as well as the habitat folks? Or? Well, as habitat is a nonprofit and the land bank is a, basically a governmental agency. <laughs> for the county, uh, we can't follow the exact same process. So ours will be by application, open to anybody that is a first time homeowner. And 
feels that they qualify according to the income guidelines. And as I said, that can be up to, you know, roughly $78,000 a year for a family of four. It can be far below that too. Uh, and then based upon that, we'll select the families. But then of course the families in our case will have to go to a commercial lending institution and we'll have a partner help them with that, with the financial counseling, with the homeowner training, with the financial uh, training that goes behind that. It'll probably be a neighborhood housing partnership, you know, uh, which I think some of you uh, know in, in Clark County, to provide those parts of the training. And then, unlike Habitat, it obviously won't be a 0% mortgage. <laughs> They'll be able to assist a family at hopefully a little bit less income than what the land bank, ARPA funded homes, will be able to assist. But in exchange, we will be able to, if they qualify and are in need, provide them with that down payment assistance grant that they would actually not pay as long as they stay in the home for the declining period of that second mortgage. So is it the same, um, maybe I missed this, but is it the same kind of training as far as the... Same kind of training. And in fact, it, it, the, it may be through, the, through, we may partner with Habitat to do the same training since it's all a new Carlisle and they're building here. I'm just, I used neighborhood housing partnership in the past uh, before Habitat was here. <laughs> we used uh, NHP to provide the exact same kind of training that is all uh, HUD certified. Uh, training for these new homeowners. I'm just, uh, yeah, and I guess the, the background of that is I'm just concerned about them, them understanding you got this home, well, you need to budget for the upkeep of this home. This home is yeah. deteriorating every day. You know, you got to put money back, and, and they just need some of that coaching, I think. And, and a lot of that. That, that will be a condition of our program and it's a condition of habitats yeah. also. And, and we, I agree completely. And, and one, of, I think one of the things that Habitat has in its, in its favor is that, as Dave mentioned, our development director, you know, we do have, we have a 30-year relationship or 25-year relationship with our families. One of the reasons we're successful is because we're able to continue, right, to foster those kinds of uh, habits, you know, and if there, you know, if there are things that come, you know, like if there is COVID again, you know, what happens? What happens to everybody, right? All of a sudden, you know, people have to figure out how do I get through this spell? Well, Habitat has the advantage that we, we're able to help our families get through those kinds of things. And like I say, I think it's, it's a pretty successful program. You're right. Everybody, when I, when I grew up, or when I bought my first home, nobody, I didn't have any homeowner training. I was fortunate that, you know, growing up, my, my dad was, uh, you know, did remodeling, and so I had some background. Oh, it, I mean, it's just, it's eye opening. I mean, when I bought my yes. first house, it, you don't realize how many things, when you walk to the garage, and I didn't buy a shovel when I grew up, there was always a shovel in the garage, <laughs> but now I have to go buy a shovel, you know, dad always had one, I guess he went and bought one, so I guess I need to, you know, just little things like that you don't think about and you got budget for. Yeah. We provide our homeowners with a lawn and tool kit. Although a shovel isn't something we give them. <laughs> put that on the list. But they get a lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. Hmm? Thank you, Mr. Bond. Anyone else? All right. Great questions. Um, uh, I think that covers it, gentlemen. Thank you for your time and uh, information. It was, uh, it was easy. What? We had a presentation. Yeah. Ago. So we had a few more slides to go. So I'll, for the sake of time, we'll skip. The other one was a parcel, just a, uh, information about that parcel. But I do want to share with council the next steps. Um, so tomorrow I'll be signing a non-binding letter of intent. I just want to stress that is a non-binding letter of intent. On 321-23, council will have that purchase agreement intro. The week of March 27th, we'll go in front of the planning board to split those lots up. I gave the diagram, I had the four separate lots. Um, so that would be uh, the week of 327. The week of April 3rd, the purchase agreement action will be in front of council. You guys will vote on that. At that same meeting, we'll have you hear a variance to allow them to build under uh, a different zoning classification other than the current zoning that's what's out there yet, and that's to be determined. Um, you'll also, we'll also begin the zone change process of that, taking it to the actual appropriate zone change, but that, as we know, is about a 45 to 60 day process with how we gotta change our zoning code. On the week of 4-8-23, the purchase agreement will be effective should council approve it. 
and the city council's uh, site plan and elevations approval as well. So still got some steps to go through, um, but I think they presented a great pre presentation tonight. Uh, I just want to say to stress the importance of this project. The reason why we're leaving that extra access road there is should the city want to develop back of that and along Clay Street, we would still have access to that. So that is why the 50 foot access road is there. So again, with all the new homes we have coming in, so upper of 680 right now, it would be good to have a little bit of offerings for some moderate income individuals who may not be able to qualify for some of the bigger houses that we are getting ready to build. Uh, and so for the sake of time, we'll definitely end it up. But again, it's been a great pleasure working with you guys. Always a pleasure working with uh, Land Bank and the, the, the employees. And I want to thank everyone for their time. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, gentlemen. And we'll be moving on under communications for the DZA hearing for a 101 short drive. And I'll hand that to Mr. Bridge when you're ready. So we have a BZA hearing, and for those in the audience, we normally have a separate board that sits on our board of zoning appeals, but we are having a hard time filling that. So right now, our city council is acting on that behalf. So we do have a, a an application for a setback variance. It is for 108 Short Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio. Um, it is for Tasha Paul, and she was the applicant, um, and the uh, owner of the uh, uh, property is Darren, and they're both in attendance tonight. So I'd like to read the narrative and statement and staff report that I gave council for the record. That says staff notes, the current zoning is R2 and the zoning is not appropriate zone classification and other immediate surrounding parcels. I definitely wanted to take a minute and discuss that with council and the audience because I think it's very key to this case. I submitted with the packet, a diagram that looks like this, a chart that looks like this. So basically what this is, this is all the zones that we have in the city and the minimum qualifications that you got to be to be in that zone. Um, it could be ranging from your minimum lot size, to your lot width, et cetera, et cetera. So what happened was when the city zoned this area up here, they needed a minimum of 20 acres to get a R2 zone. And what they, the R2 zone is really, if you know where Linden Avenue is in New Carlisle, it's a little short street. We got a few big houses on it with massive yards. That is your true R2 zoning. The minimum square foot required for R2 zoning is 21,780 square feet. This applicant, even though she, they are zoned R2, has around 11,000. So again, what the city did is they just picked a bunch of parcels that did not qualify for R2 because they needed a minimum of 20 acres to classify that area over there as R2. So the owners of the property actually have an undue hardship per se that they did not create themselves because the city just needed additional acres to make that a 20 acre. So it really needs to be reclassified, to be honest, uh, but the city has failed to do that. So when you put it in that classification, you know, like a house on Linden would have a massive backyard. So them go being 50 foot away from their property line or any of their property lines is a lot more achievable because they have 21,000 square feet. Was now we have that we cut it in half, and this particular parcel has 11,000 square feet in this, and but they're required to adhere to the R2 zonings. So that is a that's a, 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 an issue that we will have to address moving forward and to get the appropriate zoning over there. Uh, the applicant is proposing a 14 by 44 foot, 616 square foot addition to the rear of their small house for a new living room and additional space. We also have lot coverage. So lot coverage in R2 is 20%. You are allowed to have 20% of your total area covered. Um, right now, uh, they, uh, it, should the proposed addition be approved, they will still have 522 square feet to cover. So they're not uh, near their maximum coverage. The, seer, the rear setback requirement for R2 zones in the city is 50 feet and is measured from the edge of the house to the property line. The property owner is requesting a 28 foot rear setback variance. What that's going to entail is where the current principal structure is. You subtract that from uh, the 14 feet width of the new addition, and that's what the variance is. So we're taking um, 50 minus 22, which leads it at 28. So on the application, there's a narrative section, um, and I filled that out for council tonight. And let me get to the question so you know what I'm answering. So uh, narrative uh, question A said that special conditions and circumstances exist 
which are particular to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to other land structures or buildings involved in the same district. So the response to that was the lot layout is, is of triangular shape and not a rectangular or square like most of the plotted plots in the city. When you look at most of your parcels, they are a perfect rectangle or a perfect square. This one happens to be a square that points out like this. So they're actually in a weird shaped parcel. That literal, uh, a question B, the literal interpretation of this zoning code would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same district under this zoning code. The response, the zoning classification is not appropriate classification for this and other surrounding parcels. If this lot were a true R2, then a variance more than likely would not be needed. Uh, question C, that special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. The response is the city of New Carlisle zoned the land R2, not the property owner. D, that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this zoning code to other land structures or buildings in the same district. The response is the city is not aware of, of other, other similar variance denials in R2 zones of the city. The staff recommendation is the Board of Zoning Appeals should grant the rare setback variance as the current zoning is not an appropriate classification which the applicant had no control over. City Council should consider all aspects of the application and any other public comments on this matter. And when you get to public comments, Mr. Mayor, I do have a letter that was submitted anonymously on um, a resident's behalf, I'm assuming. Okay. So are we going, are, are we going to uh, take action on this tonight? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, Mr. Uh, you guys stand at the podium back there. They might have some questions directed towards you. Okay. I have a question for you. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bridge, yes. since the zoning and their predicament is no cause of their own and it's all on the city, I am assuming they had to pay to have to come before the BZA? They did. Their, it's, their it's, fees? It's a $125 fee, yes. But if it would have been zoned properly, they wouldn't have to came to before the BZA for a, for a, uh, a zoning. I haven't got to the nitty gritty of that, but they would more than likely be zoned R4. Okay. Um, so that would require 40 foot setback. So they okay. would still need a variance, but not nearly as much. Okay. Okay, thanks, sir. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So this variance would be how much space at the back of the house? From the other property? Yes. Um, 22 feet-ish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I cruised by uh, this evening. Um, 44, feet. 44 feet wide, 14 deep feet deep. Is that where it is? Yes, sir. How close do you come to that steep hill behind you? Um, there's probably, after the addition would come on, probably an additional eight feet. Where the addition will go is where the awning currently is. So we're, I, I believe it's like two feet past the awning. Where the current awning structure is, is what we're looking to enclose to turn into a living room. And then add length, the length of the house, but not that back towards that hill. So I didn't go around with the back. The so house. basically. Because <laughs> I got yelled wants, at once. See, for, this is the awning. Yeah. Right. He wants to add well, looking too close. And just go okay. over the what about drainage? What about what? Drainage from the hill. So drainage on the hill is a current issue um, that turns that whole back area into nothing but a mud pit. So that's part of what they will be doing while they're back there is to get drainage down and around the hill to, to help out. They're building a retaining wall where the steep hill is mm -hmm. to assist in the drainage to go out. So that, that's that part sense. of that's part of the issue that brought us to the addition was the drainage issue. It's just constantly a mud pit in the whole whole entire backyard coming off of the hill. Okay, thank you. I'm good. Thank you for now. Anyone else? Question. I assume for the manager. Are we voting on this now or later? You have to vote on it tonight. Now or later? I know tonight, but are we going to vote on this? Because uh, you'll need a motion to pass, right? Right. You need a motion now or you need it after comments? Or 
Well, I mean, I can get through the comments, but before I go on to the next thing on the agenda, there would need to be a vote for it, yes. I mean, comments from members of the public. Yeah, well, yeah, for this particular case, not on the actual agenda. So there's okay. comments for public on this particular case. Okay, okay. Uh, the only other question I'd have, Mr. Mayor, is for the uh, lady and gentleman. Do you have anything else you want to tell us about your, uh, your property or what you're planning on, other things you're planning on doing and whatnot? You already addressed the draining. Um, so ultimately, when we build the addition, the way the kitchen's laid out, there's no room to have an actual dining area. So that's the purpose of it for our daughters to be able to, if when you come out of the kitchen, there's the double doors right there. We want to be able to go out and that be our family dining area um, to be able to see, sit and eat dinner. And then while they're out there, they would address all the drainage and everything that needs to be done in the backyard. Okay. There's Thank also, you. there's six of us. We have four daughters. Feel bad for him. Oh, wow. And <laughs> Our condolences, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we currently have next to nothing as a living room or dining room. We eat upstairs, upstairs in our bedroom on the couch because there's, just, there's no good way to put anything down there. Right. Cut down the middle of the, the kitchen and the living room is a load-bearing wall that we can't take out, so there's no it. way to do anything we're remodeling the the kitchen this year but still even with that there's no way to get a table that me and our kids could fit on so ultimately our goal is to you know raise our property value keep the house up to date and have our kids have a good home okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you mr Lindsay Henry Wallace. The letter did you say that mr bridge yeah, there is a letter. Okay. Did you have copies of it or was you reading it? I, I can read it for the record. Okay. Please do. Sure. It says, and it's signed anonymous. It says, Dear Sir or Madam, I'm a New Carlisle resident who lives in close proximity to the property. Requesting the variance, uh, the purpose of this letter is to communicate my concerns and objecting to the approval of the variance. The property behind the residence is a steep hill. I am concerned that dis disturbing the soil and extending the residence toward the property line and the base of the hill may cause water runoff and soil erosion problems causing hazardous conditions for both properties. I don't believe the, the, re the requester has any practical difficulty in the use of their property. They have suffi just sufficient land to expand to the north of their property without the need for an easement variance. In addition, the current residents of the property on Short Drive fail to currently adequate, adequately maintain the property. The owner has numerous dogs that are left unattended most of the times. In their angst, the dogs constantly run from one side of the house to another to the extent that they have worn away the grass surrounding their house, leaving nothing but mud around the house perimeter. Thank you for time to consider this. Sincerely, Anonymous. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Could I add something? Sure so the dogs are absolutely outside and it's absolutely a mud pit. I'm not, there's no way around that. She's a stay at home mom. The dogs are never left unintended. Never. So. Um, sir. I live next door and I can test if the dogs are outside, somebody's home. Thank you. It's not that they're leaving the dogs unintended. Yeah. Somebody is in the house. Okay. You need to get what, um, what was your name, and do you need his name and address for that comment? It would help, yeah. I was your, gonna, your name and address, address, please. Uh, okay. what is it short? Jeff Barlow. Jeff Barlow? Uh, right next door. Okay. My dog's Just, love him. Okay. <laughs> He's my best friend. <laughs> so even though it doesn't matter to me, I mean, as far as what you guys do with your house, I mean, just yeah. out of curiosity, with that letter, I mean, can yeah. you build to the north? So to no. the north of it, when you come out of the kitchen slash living room, it goes down three little steps to a, I don't know, 15 by 15 basement, and then the garage is attached to that, so there'd be no yeah. no way to, to yeah. do all that. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. That was it's cinder block, so... Mm -hmm. That's next door. And how far? North, it would be a barrier to the near house and Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to. How far did you say the, uh, he already asked it. I just couldn't remember your answer. From once, once you, if you were to build out far from that hill. 24. My guesstimate would be about eight feet. Um, yeah. After the from, from wall. the retaining wall to the hill would be about To where it starts feet. to drop? Yeah, and okay. the, the, the awning that's currently there on the concrete pad is 11 feet. So or 12 so we're asking for two more feet and that is still roughly five to six feet from my fence which isn't even back to the hill okay oh, okay I see that. yeah mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you have a fenced-in yard, but then your property extends past that fence. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can see it now. You zoomed in. Yeah. There's wooded area. Yeah, yep. I, I, yep. Which I can see the tree. <laughs> would be impossible to put the fence up yeah. there. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, council, any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. You, they don't have this. This, do they? No, she has a copy of that. Okay. I mean, I don't know if she has it on her person, but I emailed it to her. Uh, I have it on my yes, phone. Not. I can pull it up. There's the house, and then behind it, there we go. Hang on. About half the length of the house. Is that the awning that you were talking yes. about? Yes. Yes, that's the awning. It's white on the turf. Uh, I mean, it looks yeah. similar to the roof color. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. Thank you. Okay. And that's what you're going to be. Replacing. Yes, sir. So it would go roughly two feet past the edge of that. Yeah. Is where we're so closer towards the back. Two so feet this way. Okay. And then mm -hmm. the entire length. And then the entire length of the house. So basically, this two feet wider and full length of the house. house. Okay, I got it. Anything else? Kind of slow sometimes. That's all right. I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Bond. Is this something you guys are doing yourselves or no, you hiring a contractor? Contractor. Contract. Yes, a couple contractors <laughs> and an architect. It's a, it's a couple contractors <laughs> and an architect that will be, be doing it. All right, any other questions? I, yeah, I, just my two cents. I don't see an issue with it. I mean, I guess you. I guess there's a possible concern for water a little bit, but I don't see it being anything. Great. I mean, my, I mean, you you deal with this more than us as far as I mean. Do you potentially see any big issues there? Um, as long as they control the runoff, because one of the code requirements is you can't your your property can't drain onto another one. Um, but it, it, since they're addressing that, I don't know how the French drain or just re relocate the drains up to them. But um, I'm sure the owner would file a complaint behind them if it, if it wasn't corrected, and we'd have to correct it that way. But They've been great to work with. They've been very transparent throughout this whole so process. So has Randy. He's oh. awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's, he is. He's Thanks. awesome and easy. What was that, sir, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> Randy is awesome. Put that in your notes, though. So, All right. right. I don't know what day it is. Are we talking about this, Mr. Yeah. Britt? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor? This runoff, is that going to go, what, into a ditch, into the street? So, I, to be honest, I'm not qualified to answer that question. I'm not honestly sure. I know that the the concrete and the ar the concrete guy and the architect, when they came out to draw the initial, just rough estimate of what we're looking to do, spent probably an hour and a half talking about what they would do with that. Um, I can get that for you guys if that helps. I'm not sure. I don't want to misquote on what they they were going to do, but most of their time was spent about the runoff and how do we keep the water going in the right direction and then off of the house and the new add-on. Um, it took the architect literally maybe 15 minutes to draw up the sketch, and they were there for two hours. So I don't want to I don't want to answer that question. But it won't go into another. But it, it is a concern of ours as, as well. As it is right now, it does come in my front yard. With what they're proposing, my front yard on that section. Not okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Bridge, but when when they when they get the plans of the contractors to build this, a contractor is gonna have to. I mean, the drainage is something they have to do. They'll look at the, the, the how much storm water is going to be collected off that new roof surface, okay. and now it's in, the, it's in their calculation. Okay. Um, once we just do, so how everyone knows, at the city level here, we just do the zoning. Right. We make sure that the setbacks are all right, that council's okay with appropriate boards, and then it gets sent off, off the county, who does the building and everything else. Okay. Yeah. Where's your house? Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm kind of trying to figure out why I got to live there. Yeah. No. No. Just one, one level. level. Yeah. Uh, we've. <laughs> yes. Um, we've already uh, once had tree trimmers come out and attempt. Yes. You're talking about the big cottonwood. Yeah. You have to make a motion to approve the 20 inch Yeah. Yeah. Probably make a motion to approve it. Yes. Yes. Uh, Which is yeah. just all the contractor. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yeah, we're, yes, we're whole, addressing everything. That whole area up there that's just like a swampy mess, oh, that no. thing is all part of what's being Yeah, yeah. yeah. if we needed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This type of equipment would be able to come in and take those big trees down. Right now, they got the lost pond and stuff. And then once that's announced, they can build it in and they can bring it under the equipment. Yeah. Okay. Because that was part of the issue, is they're so tall and so big that the people had. They're huge. They're trees. huge. They had a hard time trimming them. And we. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be. Uh, Sir, no. what was your name and address for the record? Uh, and the reason you got the letter, our code states anyone who goes for a variance, we have to uh, notify anyone within 500 feet of their parcel. Same, same process, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On whose property has the easement? Oh, that's fine. That's, that's, that's yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Ms. Farnsworth? No, we're good. So we'll need what we would need, Council, if you wanted was to Mr. do Mayor, a motion a for uh, the motion to grant the 28 foot variance. So moved. Second. So motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. The second thing I heard first. Sorry. We're back. <laughs> Any other discussion before Ms. Burner calls for the vote? I don't think you have any other people. I, I recognize most of these people, so I don't think okay. most of them I just didn't know. Hey, Bill? Uh, make a comment. Go to the podium. Go to the podium. Go to the podium, Go to the podium, podium, podium. sir. Just so they can get you on mic. We need a voice in. You don't recognize so you're it? saying that it changes the zoning of that whole entire flat to an R4 now? From an R2? No, no, it's not just their no, house. Nothing's changing. That's why they're getting the variance. Oh, it's still going to stay in R2 zoning. Until we'll now, we do got to take a look at it. I am going to be looking at it. I put it on my to do list because mm -hmm. none of those houses up there mm -hmm. are properly zoned. Okay. So you're considering changing them to the R2? Yeah, but I got to get yeah, into it because there's a reason why they did it. I just got to make sure that we can get away from the reason why they do it again. And where can I find the information on what an R4 is doing versus an R2? You get for it right here. Mm -hmm. You can take this with you. I can replace it when I get back to the office. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. All right, I'll let him grab that real quick and then we'll go for the vote. Yes. All right, Ms. Burner, when you would please call for the vote. All right, Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hope we can get a new nice dining table down there. Yes. yes. Are you going to have us in for dinner when you get a dinner? Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> oh, are you a Bignalls fan? Oh, I got it. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. No problem. I don't like Randy. They tend to eat me. You're welcome. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank have you. a good evening. Thank you. All right. So moving on, uh, we have charter review discussion up here as well. We've already had someone at a long meeting. I don't know if you guys do want to get into it or if you want to bump it to the next meeting. It's up to you guys. I mean, that's potentially a very long discussion. <coughs> or, set a, or set a second meeting. Yeah, let's bump it. work session. Okay, well, let's um, send it to the next meeting. I'll talk to you about putting it on the agenda. Okay. And we'll go from there. Okay. <coughs> Everyone okay with that? Yes. <coughs> All right, moving on to city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, back to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of public, and members of council. It's kind of short because I knew we had a big agenda tonight. Um, so good news, the 2023 levy information we did hear back, both the health levy and fire and EMS levy ballot proofs that get approved, so we will be on the ballot. Um, so in the coming months, we'll have to strategize how we're going to promote that. Um, but it is good news uh, that, that we are going to make the uh, ballot. So congratulations. And uh, DR Horton developed. We are in early TIF estimates discussions. Right now, they gave us some soft numbers. We're in the uh, process of finalizing those. Um, and of course, council uh, will have the appropriate legislation when needed to approve that TIF. Uh, friendly reminder, we have a traffic study presentation. And I encourage everyone who's here, because they're going to have a vested interest in this, 
They're actually going to present on that traffic study. That is April 3rd. That's a Monday at a regular council meeting. So we would love to have you back for that. And again, <coughs> ordinance 2022-59, the residential trash can placement, that is tabled for 30 days. We'll revisit that on April 30th, 2023. That is all I have. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate it as always, sir. <clears throat> all right, moving on to committee reports tonight. Uh, we jump to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address, and please try to keep it to five minutes. I'll try. Okay, keep it to five minutes. <laughs> Roy Kegley, um, owner of Abe's Head and Treasures at 100 East Jefferson Street. Um, I was at the uh, Coffee and Donuts for Council Saturday at the Firehouse, had a conversation with uh, Mr. Bridge, um, was asking questions about uh, the new housing coming in, um, which and how that's going to affect some things that I had heard as far as uh, turn lanes and things like that at Main and Jefferson Street again. Um, I know it was several years ago we all had the same discussion where the businesses community got into it and said we did not want it. Um, Mr. Uh, Bridge said that we, these were definitely going to happen, um, and I guess I just want to express my discontent with that. Again, here we go, arguing over something because it takes five minutes to get from Speedway to Domino's. If we have such a traffic congestion problem now, why are we bringing in 680 new homes? Um, that just makes no sense. We live in a small town. This town was not made for turn lanes. The streets are not wide enough. If you want to take away the downtown businesses, you're going to take away our parking. If we have no place for people to park, the city cannot offer us any, any additional parking. The city parking, municipal parking, is full. The streets are already full of parking. I mean, where do you want us to keep our doors open and how? I guess that's my major concern. I would also like to see if the city can give us maps and details as far as what parking spots are going to be taken and where. And from talking to Mr. Bridge, I understand that this is not a council issue, that this is a city administrative issue, that he or the city administration, <coughs> excuse me, city administration will actually make the call, not council. Um, I would ask council to step up now and stop this, at least delay it until residents, business owners, building owners can get their say to you and stop the city manager and administration from doing this. Thank you, sir. Anyone have any comments, feedback? I do. Sir. Uh, you mentioned that a few years ago that this was brought up, Mr. Kegley, and uh, at that time, council did have a say-so in it. So my question to Mr. Bridge, what has changed? from council having a say-so in what happens in this city to it being an administration decision? Because that was a completely different funding source. So that was done by federal grant to which you had to approve the legislation to accept because it was like a $500,000 project. Okay. So this particular thing, if I, that conversation would have continued, council doesn't have the authority to, to sit there and say, yeah, we don't need it. Because I, I say this, because council approved the study so it will come back to council, regardless if we have to or not. And I have told, spoke to council members about this. We bring everything to council, we get your opinion on it. Um, let's say the project cost comes in at $29,000. That is something that I'll have to have council approval on because it's under that monetary threshold to spend. Um, that doesn't mean there's not going to be legislation on it. That doesn't mean we're not going to have discussions on it. That doesn't mean we're not going to have a community get together. What I meant by that is council's not going to have formal, any formal legislation because there's no dollar amount. But if it goes up to 36,000, because we might have to get a new signal or something like that, then it will go legislatively in front of council. But as far as that decision that go through with it, that will be discussed, but there will be no formal um, ordinance or resolution to approve it or deny it. Excuse me, sir. It'd be nice if council would listen to what the manager is saying. I'm listening. Uh, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. That's why I'm done. The, uh, so you're telling, telling us that at some point in the future we're going to have a town hall or a humongous council meeting. On, it will be discussed with council. On this with, with the input of the citizens Absolutely. and business owners. I mean... Because I had heard that comment 
that we didn't have any say so and I go what <laughs> legislatively depending on the dollar amount so the first thing I thought okay mm -hmm. if we have no say so and the administration can make this decision then we're not going to hear from basically our constituents because they're going to hold us responsible not the city manager or the administration I mean you follow my thinking yeah, but this is a so, strong manager form of government. I understand. So that. that entails the administration making the call for the day to day. I understand. But again, I want to stress, as I talked to Mr. Grimm today about it, you guys know me. I bring everything to council to discuss. And I usually get a motion to approve or deny. So if you think I'm blindly just going to say, hey, we're going to do this without talking about it as a group, that's not me. So again, if that conversation would have continued, but it ended abruptly, it would have been explained a little bit better. Yeah, council don't have any legislative say mm -hmm. unless it's over 35,000. We're going to do the same process before we do it. We're going to get your opinion on it. But I will stress that the traffic study right now warrants um, a lot of changes if the developments come in and they, they, they get to full capacity. What I'm going to do is I've already put an addendum into that traffic study because we, you guys failed the Miami County one. So I'm curious to know how much of the reduction of those cars impact the overall traffic study. So that's going to be discussed Wednesday morning. Um, so when we, we get the results of that, we'll bring it back. But as of right now, with no developments in, it is warranted to have a north, a north and south left turn lane installed at 235 Main Street. That is even without the developments coming in. So when we had that presentation at 101 between me, the mayor and vice mayor, and the guy who did the traffic study and our service director, he brought it up then. So um, that's just where we're standing with it. But I just want to stress, like for us to go and do something like that without participating council into that, that's a long stretch, that won't happen. But legislatively, you may probably won't have anything because I don't see the project cost being under 35. I mean, over 35 just to do a shave, like a, scrap some uh, paint off and then put new paint down. You good, Mr. Lindsay? $35,000. I'll go scrape the paint. I said, yeah, I said, I don't see it being that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that explains it a little better. And uh, I've worked with you for a while. So I don't want you to think that I actually thought that, but based on what I had heard, I thought that, <coughs> what do we mean? We don't get, a, get, get something on this, you know, because I've never known you actually to do things without informing us, uh, whether, whether it was your jurisdiction or not. You, you in my mind, has been <coughs> fairly good at keeping abreast of everything that happens in the city. I bring a lot to council that I think we don't. You do. So I appreciate that and I appreciate your comments. I, to, to the public, uh, we understand. The, I understand all your concerns. The, but at some point, we're going to have all of you back to basically rip us again. <laughs> and the, uh, I, I don't mean to make light of it, but I, I know I've been through it before, and that's what happened. I can only assume it's going to happen again. The I will tell you, I'm not from losing any parking spots. I made the same comment a few years ago when I was sitting up here. Uh, my position hasn't changed any. The uh, I think somebody said they'd like to know uh, how many spots and what spots. I think it was Mr. Cagley that said that. Uh, we'd like to know also the spots and, and how and how it's going to impact this, the businesses. Because if we lose too many spots, businesses will just up and leave. Because then we become a non-business friendly town. And I, I really don't want that. I think there's, there's other things that I think council can do. I don't know if we, I mean, I think we can do it, but we'll probably have to have the state approval to do it. And I won't get into it now, but at the appropriate time when we're talking about this, I'm thinking it might come up. And I don't even, Mr. Bridge, or anyone I'm talking about, uh, unless somebody else told me about it. The, uh, and since I haven't told anybody, I don't know if anybody else knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but there are other things I think we can, we can do besides take, uh, parking spots and that's all i have sir all right, thank you sir Mr. thank you sir. vice mayor you said you don't expect it to exceed thirty-five thousand. 
unless we have to get new traffic. <coughs> If there's going to be a turn lane, there's going to have to be a turn light. Well, our current light can hold that capacity. So the study says if it's all blown out, then a new signal is going to be installed. So that's why I got to determine when does that new signal come in. But right now, for just the two north and southbound lanes, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no signal required. That includes the reprogramming the signals? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry? That includes reprogramming the signals? They would have to reprogram them, yes. And that all be less than 35 pounds. I, I, I'm assuming so. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. But again, I stress, even if it's 19, we're still going to have a dis group discussion on it. It's it's going to be a waste down the pipe. Huh? It's going to be a little waste down the pipe. Down the pipe? Oh, like down the road? Oh, for sure. Not literally down the pipe. I know. That's why I'm just like, well, I don't know about doing We're going to move it down the dominoes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other council members? Mrs. Eggleston. When Rite Aid went in, in that contract that they made with the city, wasn't there something in that where the outer parking lot, um, parking spaces were, could be used by the city? I've had heard that. I'm going to revisit that. Because um, I know CBS is really gracious about letting city people park in that. And I'm almost positive what you're saying about Rite Aid is correct but I don't have the information in front of me, so I don't want to say yay or nay, but that does sound very, very familiar. Um, and I will go on to say, I understand everyone's concerned. If I owned a, a, store, a store there, I'd be concerned about it too. So, um, but it's, 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 it's gonna be a very tough discussion. I think when we come to that point, I mean, for sure it's gonna be a hard discussion. Anyone else? Okay. Hang on, just a hang on, hang on, hang on. Mr. Cook, did you have anything? I got something else, but in regard to the waste contract. Oh, okay. Well, we'll st <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> okay. Um, anything on this one? We needed something. You did. Did you say you had something? Oh yeah. On, on this matter. Okay. There's also a monstrous parking lot behind Riding on Pike Street. The only time it's used is when the Masons have something going on. You probably have, we have older people coming to the store, 70, 80 years old, and they have a new vision. Can you grab that microphone? It's okay. Well, we have residents that are 70, 80 years old in wheelchairs or walkers and they come to our store. They need to use our side ramp. If you're talking to Mr. Bridge, our, our spot on the side of our store, where our handicap ramp is, will be taken for sure. Now, Check the minutes from that meeting. Good. Is there a possibility to reconfigure the parking lot behind Penny Lane and maybe make that larger? <laughs> We'd have to do some land acquisition. Unless you buy some land. <laughs> well, right now, signs move, so. That's what I'm saying with land acquisition. There's some things. Um, because the way that parking lot's configured now, I mean, vehicles today can't park in there without getting hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, sure. What's the possibility of making Main Street one way north and Church Street one way south? Well, that'd be an ODOT discussion. We don't have sole control over that. But I'm telling you right now, it's probably not going to fly with ODOT. I could be wrong. I'm not speaking on their behalf, but that's a that's a big um, big taking. I think they would take a look at the current traffic volumes and see what we could do. Uh, there would have to be a lot of improvements on Church Street to the millions of dollars. Um, so you would, I would ask council to weigh the cost benefit versus um, just you know installing the parking lanes. Um, so that's something the council would have to address because it would be a it'd be a, a big. Big re, it'd be a big, big deal to get big deal to get Church Street 
something going for that. I mean, I think Howie had mentioned there's going to be like three million just for Church Street. That's so, just to do the reconstruction yeah. to get it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but that, to be fair in discussion, that also included redoing all the underground utilities yeah. as well. So, uh, which would we would do because you're going to do it. Um, that that would be that would that's a study that would have to take a long time to undertake, and ODOT would probably have a lot to say about that. Good, Mr. I mean, there's, and I, I, I'm not saying we have to be like everyone else, but there's a lot of cities that are built like ours that forego their parking downtown. Yeah. A good example of that is Centerville, uh, 48, and where the intersection is there with uh, Square One and the uh, barbecue place. There is, it's curb to curb lanes. Um, so, you know, there's a benefit to that because you're, <laughs> you're allowed to have more cars, which more cars mean, means more visibility, means more. Could the city do better at promoting the public parking and making it more visible? Yeah, we could. I think there could be changes, whatever that could be done to be done to make it better. And I'll also look at securing some land somewhere on the other side if possible to get some parking on the other side. Um, but I just want to stress, we wouldn't be the only small city, you know, or decent sized city that has this problem. Um, so as we grow as a community, and we'll have to, like I said, get together as a community to decide what, 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 what way to move forward. Um, just my two cents on it. Um, you know, and it's unfortunate that you know, when the people laid out New Carlisle in the 1800s, it make it wider, but you know, they didn't know any better, unfortunately. So, what uh, what was interesting though is I did not know this until I learned this. I think from one of our good uh, historians, Mr. McGorder, uh, before I was born, I think in the 60s or 70s. I don't know if you guys know, but at one time it was four lanes on Main Street, two lanes going north and two lanes going south. And there was no parking on Main Street at all, which I, I can't even imagine that being done, but I guess it was done that way. Do you remember that? Okay. So, well, that, was, that, was, that was back just after the horse and buggy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> after the T model. But, um, or T. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, you know, that was suggested by ODOT for safety purposes. And I think that safety is one of the more important things. I know we need our businesses just as well. So I think that we all, when that time comes, because I think we are just a little early on this. I mean, not that you guys are not welcome to come and, and speak your piece, but as far as, I mean, we haven't even actually discussed this formally amongst the city, council, uh, administrators, any, any of that nature. So it's not even being discussed yet on our end officially yet. So. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always open to new ideas. I just, you know, we, we do get a lot of complaints, especially, you know, what, I mean, you guys, most of you guys have shops on, town, on Main Street. What's the busy time? Probably from 4 to 6? Mm -hmm. 4 to 5. 4 to 5, 4 to 6, give or take, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, but, yeah, I mean, that's all I really have to say. It just, it's, it's still early. We've got to get information from, you know, the engineers and, and you know, all the above, so. And council revisit that traffic study we sent out because it actually has the traffic council on there. Right. Yeah. And it does peak at certain hours. Yeah. For sure. And it was interesting to, to hear them say that that intersection was warrant, warranted to have turn lanes regardless of, of any developments coming. So I, I didn't realize it was that bad until they showed us the numbers. So it was interesting. So anyone else from the audience to the podium with your name and address, please, ma'am? Yeah, if you want to speak, just so we just so we get it on record. Uh, my name is Kathy Barker. <clears throat> you need my address? Please. It is 1462 Barger Road, Urbana, Ohio, 43078. I live in Champaign County, but I own property on Main Street in New Carlisle. The thing I want to address um, is I think, you know, we've heard the rumors, and I think it's better to, to, to get at it before it, it even starts the process because it's um, something that's, very important, especially to those of us that either have businesses or property on Main Street. If, if the, the turn lanes are to better the town, I'm afraid it's not going to be better for the businesses or the property owners on Main Street. What makes New Carlisle unique, we're, we're starting to attract a lot of new business, a lot of new small business, and what makes New Carlisle unique is that they have curbside parking in front of the stores. People do not like to go back and use that municipal lot. They just don't. Um, they like to park in front of the store. I'm worried about Abe's Hidden Treasures who have brought a lot of business to our town. Um, I'm afraid they'll lose all their parking. Uh, Linda's got a great antique shop. 
um, if people cannot park in front of these stores, they are not going to go to the municipal lot, and it takes away uh, the uniqueness of the city. And I really think, even though you can do it, doesn't necessarily mean you have to. You've got to keep New Carlisle unique. We don't need to be like Centerville. Um, we just need to stay unique. If not, it's going to kill the small businesses, and therefore it will kill the, val the property value of our businesses or buildings in the city. So you've got to decide what you want. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, uh, my name is Mark Blassett. I live at uh, 212 North Smith Street here in New Carlisle. I recently moved here in January. Um, I just got two issues I'd like to bring to council's attention for their consideration, not necessarily immediate action. Really. The first one is the uh, speeding on Smith Street. Um, it's really getting out of hand. Uh, cars, and, you know, the worst speeders are like Lowe's, Delivery drivers, UPS, Amazon Prime. I think I'm flying down there, like, you know, they're delivering from the White House or something. But, but that's the first thing. Uh, second thing, I received a call several weeks ago from a gentleman. He said he was from the city. His name was Howie. His, I, he didn't give me his last name. Mr. Kitko, he's our service director. Okay. And it's just city manager. And it's just manager. And uh, there's a well head between my property and the neighboring property, 212 and 214. And it looks like it straddles both our property lines. So for, I didn't know Howie's last name. I'll just say Howie. Uh, Kitko. Kitko. Kitko, yeah. Uh, he mentioned that, I don't know if the city was under a mandate or the EPA or how EPA had been in communication with the city to say, look, you got all these wells in Terra Villa, and I think we used to be called Carlisle Estates. Um, somebody has to take care of it. Well, I asked Mr. Kitko, do you have a documentation showing that whoever owns that property is responsible for that wellhead? And he didn't have any documentation. So um, I checked my county record, my deed, when I bought that property, there's nothing in there addressing the well. So it's kind of like a, uh, it's just there. The city probably doesn't have responsibility to test the water or to cap it off. I don't know. Uh, property owners, uh, I talked to the lady next door to me. She said the previous property owner between them just decided, well, we'll take care of it on their own, using their own money. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't know if the city was going to mandate for the property owner that they have to do something for that well. Is there any action or? Well, I, it was a couple of meetings back. Mr. Kitko went over this exact issue. There, I believe what the EPA is, do you remember the details of it? The EPA is, is mandating that the city you know, account for all wellheads in town. And I believe to, um, to make sure that they're clean and, and up, you know, up to date, up to service and things of that nature. And that's the ball. And not well. being used for public. Right. Not for, for personal consumption. Is this still an active well? I mean, does it work? Yeah, oh yeah, there's oh, a yeah. pump in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, what the situation, there's two spigots on each side, one for, uh, for Marty and one for me. And then there's a big extension cord on it. You know, like if I'm using it, I go over, plug it in, and there's a switch, flip the switch, use the well. And then when I'm done with it, I tell Marty, she goes over That's and puts her shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But whoever built that plant, I, I'm not sure what the reasoning was to put wells in if they had city water. <laughs> well, go ahead, Mr. As, as a gentleman who lived, I lived at 209 Smith for 12 years. I uh, moved a few years ago. So the wells were put in when, when there was a, uh, a water shortage in New Carlisle. And that plant had just got developed. So all the homeowners, when they built the houses, when they would build two houses, they would get together and split the cost and put the well directly on the property line. Um, and then... So it was like a gentleman's agreement yes. between that. Every property. house on Smith, I promise you, every house well, has, has a well. Well, that being said, 
is the city going to come up with a new mandate for all the properties with all these wells? I, I, I don't, I, that would be a question for Mr. Kitko. I don't know if um, you have his contact info or can we? Yeah. I'll talk to Howie about that. If the EAP requires us to do something because the EAP is on a kick right now for all these wells and make sure they're clean, then yeah, we'll have to be forced to do legislation. But us bringing it just out of the blue, that would be up to Mr. Kitko since he's the assistant city manager now. I'll talk with him later, then we'll report back to council. But um, I think Mr. Roadwald explained it pretty well. And so the reason why we don't have record of it is because it's on private property. Right. Yeah. But we'll get an answer for council, then we'll communicate with you. But is that coming or is it the city's going to say, okay, folks, all you people with these wells, you're, you're going to be required to pay or? I'd like to revisit that conversation with Mr. Kiko before okay. we give up on that But we'll give you a call and let you know. Great. Okay. And then I just wanted, before you walk away, I wanted to touch on Mr. Garman. I was about to say it was a speed question. Uh, oh. There's two ways we can go about doing that. When is it? Is it all day and all night? Oh, yeah. Or is it a certain amount of times during well, the day? Well, during the week, like, when people come home from work. Okay, so around probably 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. You know, and that street is in such good condition. Oh, it's sure. That's a superior yeah. you know, so speed there, way. So there's two ways we can go. I can get with you after this. And I give you a non-emergency number. And we have uh, speed trailers that we can set up to gauge how fast people are going. Maybe, maybe that's all that would be needed. To yeah, the or even during, like, those busy times. I'll send an email out to the deputies to where we can set stationary running radar on Smith Street. To Saturday nights, the world. The world, yeah, to one one measure one. speed enforcement. But yeah, I'll give it the after that. Put something out there with flashing lights. That'll yeah. make it. Is there a speed limit sign? Uh, that's on no, I don't think there. it's. Yes, it's. Is it posters? It's at each end. So when okay. you come off a of lake, you stop at the corner of Villa or Orth mm -hmm. Smith, and it's got the a sign. Speed sign right there. And then there's one right here. Other than that, as a guy who lived, um, I literally I lived yeah, there for no. 12 years. Yeah, we no. are. It, it, it is a it is a drag strip. <laughs> unlike, I mean, it's worse than Lake where I live now. Yeah. Um, now now they usually do sit on the corner of Orth mm -hmm. and, and Smith or on Villa and Smith. I mean they. Um, like you're talking about sheriff's office mm -hmm. run radar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll uh. As I'll a guy who's got two tickets. <laughs> yeah, 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 very well. You get speeding tickets, yeah. Yeah, stop I appreciate that, though. And okay. ask me. If we need to put up a speed trailer, trailer, we can do that, too, just so people are cognizant about their speeds. So. Yeah, I think that would help a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get with you on it. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Velasquez, you, yeah. you had brought up the flashing uh, speed signs at last meeting and this meeting. We are going to purchase them. We're just trying to get them a lot cheaper oh, than yeah. we got them earlier. So Smith Street is a very good candidate for that. We just don't have them, and yet we haven't ordered them yet. But yeah. it is on the to-do to -do list for this year. What about speed bump? Is that out there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I brought that <laughs> up. <laughs> Old cloud edition. Old cloud. <laughs> That's really in the back of the medical. No, we're on it many years ago, especially coming off board. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Linda has it. Right. <laughs> Sure. I don't want to give an estimate because, like I said, it's it, we just have it was a, a conversation we had. It was a private, so it's it's, it's really too early. But as soon as we have that information, we'll we'll get get it. All right. Anyone else? I think Mr. Kegley has something. Yeah, on that same discussion, oh yes. Yeah, well, I mean, it is far out, but it's not going to be next year. It might it more likely will be this year. Again, we still got to go through a lot of processes with it, and the community discussion and council involvement, and all that stuff. But. I would assume that by this time, those plans are going to be more properly No, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. No, that's not a true statement. No, they're not even done with the engineering yet. Anyone else? Any public comments? All righty, moving on to resolution. Ms. Turner, if you would, please. Resolution 2023-08, Introduction Public Hearing and Action Tonight. A resolution amending the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Roadwall. Carson. Oh, well, yeah, Go ahead, Mr. Roadwall. <laughs> Uh, explanation of this resolution, Council wanted to change the meeting times to 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We have a problem. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay? Never mind. Oh, okay. Any discussion, Council? When you're ready, Ms. Brenner? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. 
Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. And that passes five to two. Thank you. We're moving on to ordinances. <clears throat> have ordinance 2023-17 this was introduced on february 21st public hearing in action tonight an ordinance amending the city of new carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning january 1 2023 second second by mr lindsay an uh, explanation of this ordinance this is a housekeeping ordinance so anytime that we change our estimated resources um, whether we got a little bit more money in or we decided to move money around just because of the funded better some whatever the scenario may be we have to pass legislation so council approves it and then we send that legislation off to the county tax department right, council any questions or comments when you're ready please Ms. councilman roadwald yes mayor lowry yes vice mayor grimm yes Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 7-0. Ordinance 2023-18, this was introduced on February 21st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement by, by and between the city of New Carlisle and the state of Ohio Attorney General for the collection of delinquent income tax debt. So moved. Uh, an explanation. Uh, oh, wait for the manager's explanation first. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, an explanation to this ordinance. So our tax administrator brought the um, some a, a agreement that um, the auditor's office now does tax collection for past yeah. income tax debt. So what this does, it takes it off our plate, and we don't have to pay for the magistrate or pay for anything. It all gets passed on to the uh, debtor, and it's all handled through the auditor's office. Um, so any fee that they charge for that collection, it's passed on to the uh, debtor, and then we just get our full amount. So it really is a much more effective way to get your tax collection. Um, as we know, a letter from the state auditor's office is a little bit more threatening than a local mayor's court. Sir, can I have any discussion? Yes. Mr. Larsner? Do we have quite a bit of debt? Um, not too much, no. I don't, I don't have a figure in front of you, but we've collected some of the low-hanging fruit already just through a letter system that we have with CCA, and these are the people who just won't respond to that. There's beyond that. I can get that actual number from for Council and get an email to you Ball guys. Park. I don't want to speculate. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Landon. Is it more than five hours? Yes. Is my name on the list? I don't know. I'm not so privy to that information. I go to the tax administrator to get it. I'm not allowed to see that. I just talked to her. She didn't mention it. Yeah. That's very protected information. Any other comments, Council? Right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. Ordinance 2023-19, this was introduced on February 21st, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the establishment of an agency fund named Credit Memo Clearing Fund for the purpose of holding utility bill over payments and applying those credits back to customer accounts. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Thank you. Um, explanation of this ordinance. So the city, we are upgrading our utility billing software to VIP. And because of that, we have to have a new fund created to hold over payments, as it's stated in the um, memo uh, title. Um, but on top of that, any time that we create a new fund, there's a series of checks and balances in place. We have to get that approved through council, and then the state also has to approve it as well. And that's what we have in front of you tonight. Thank you, sir. Council, Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, when somebody overpays on their account, doesn't it stay in their account as a credit? anyways and is it really necessary that we do this yes it's necessary <laughs> it's necessary but they have an option but sometimes somebody just puts it in the mail and then they may overpay so we don't have a chance to ask them what they want to do some people want it refunded back some people want it credited to their account so if we don't have that opportunity okay. we have to put it in a special fund and hold to it it's a, it's a tracking purpose of okay. what it is all right thank you sir sure does that explain it yeah well yes uh i know uh 
businesses or most places, if you buy something, you overpay and it's a recurring bill, they just hold it till sure. the next month and then deduct it. But uh, government funds are a little different. Yeah, so we have to track all the unclean funds and we have to do a report on that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Yep. Anyone else? When are you ready, Ms. Brown? Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passed to 7 0. Ordinance 2023 20. Introduction tonight public hearing and action on March 20th, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for a wastewater treatment plant expansion study. Ordinance 2023-21E, introduction public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 278.08 of codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to address the membership of the Parks and Recreation Board and declaring an emergency. Council. Oh, explanation of this ordinance. Sorry, I was caught in a moment. Um, this uh, would remove your parks and rec board down to a five person to a three person board. Council? Any information? Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, so sorry about that explanation. I, thought I know you jumped in front of me. Sorry. <laughs> Ties for a lack of motion. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Sir. If I may make a comment on this ordinance. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I will let the citizens know that I am the one that put this ordinance forth based on our last meeting. At the time, in my mind, it sounded like a good idea. The only problem these people up here do is they give me time to think about things. <laughs> and I've thought about this ordinance and uh, I expressed my concerns with it to the mayor, and I believe I did with the city manager also. So I want to thank council for not motioning this to be passed. Uh, had I been a little bit clearer and hadn't had surgery and my mind messed up, I would have never made this motion. I would like to, however, and this is the last one. I would like to, however, make a motion to uh, put the Parks and Recs Board in a dormant state to until we get more participation. And I'll probably have to make a second motion with this next comment, so you'll, you'll have to let me know. I think I have to, but I'll say it anyways. And I would also recommend removal of the remaining two board members since they can't do anything anyways. It's looking for a second if anybody's interested. <laughs> so it's come join our board that doesn't exist. Well it, it will exist and then if this if that motion passed, I have another one I want to make to and I and because most motions can only have one item in at a time. I think I added two. But uh, if you want to take remove the removal out, then I will make that as a second motion. And then I have a third motion. Well, I think council will like all of them. If you want to make a motion to leave it you know, at idle, I mean, it's doing that itself without the proper. Well, this, this is true. So I guess the motion would be to remove the two remaining members because they can't function with two people. And, uh, and I also think this, this particular board should be answering directly to us and we move the city manager out of it unless it comes to funds. And I think we would have final say on that. Okay, so what's the motion? One more time. <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that. Okay, are you, are you ready, ma'am? Yeah. Can you read back what I said? Not all of it. Okay. Nope. A motion to remove the two remaining members yes. is what I just jotted down. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay, so you motioned to remove the two remaining members of Parks and Rec. And the reason is they can't do anything because they don't have five people. Okay. 
need, do I need a second? I need, I need a second. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. So that dies. Okay. Anything else, sir? No, nah, that one died. The other two ain't going to pass. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can I say one thing? You can say something, sir. Please. Uh, I would just say maybe what we need to do is just have a conversation with the two members over there and explain to them. Because it may not be something we just have to move. We can just Got volunteer to say, hey, we realize this is over. So. Right. Um, at least I think it might be a gesture of good benefit just to inform them since they're not here tonight. Right. What the discussion was. I know. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lawson, did you have something? And it's really not appropriate to fire and volunteer. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The fire department fires volunteers all the time when they mess up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Maybe, Maybe not ours, but I, I know else some of the Anything else? No, sir? that's it. All right. Anybody else? I think Mr. Cook had something about the waste. No, he's young. <laughs> so we are you at, know, we are at other better places. way to do this. You know, we're very hard pressed to get anybody to serve on committees. My original thought was to bring the Parks and Recreation Board under council control and which they are now, but bring it in like we did the board zoning appeals. Add two members of council to that board, giving them a quorum. Let them go ahead with their programs. I, I personally do not believe this is the right way to do this. But I'm all in one. All right, so, um, yeah, so no, uh, no motion or no action on uh, ordinance 2023 -2023. 21E. Uh, so we will so drop. It remains five. It remains five. Okay. And then, we, and then we will drop down to other business, sir. Um, go ahead. So we are down to other business. Uh, we're open for any other city discussion or business. Mr. Cook. Where do we stand with the waste contract? It expires at the end of this year with the ability to renew for successive terms, depending on what they come back as the end. Do we, under the bid or the contractual language, have the right to extend that contract with a 5% quote unquote increase? I would be under the assumption that without an increase, yes, we could extend the contract. But my question, I guess, is we're obligating the citizens money be it 5% or whatever, and I, I'm having a great problem with extending the contract without possibly going back out for bid. I hear you, and we don't know what that rate is going to, rate increase is going to be. We don't have the numbers. So he, when I met with him, he said that he's seeing on average 5%. My personal trash rates went up 7%. You know, so I think if you take it out to the market, you're just bound by what the market brings you back. I think if you were new, you at least have, a, you have more inside negotiation. Let's say they come back with a 7% increase and we say 6%. I think there's more negotiation. Whereas if it's out in the free market, you know, they bid back what they bid back. So last time we had this discussion, council wanted to rebid it back out and actually did not do us a favor. It actually cost us more in the long run. So Royce manager had come up with some very strong renewal numbers, but the mayor at that point in time had led council into saying, hey, we're just going to put it back out for bid. And actually ended up costing more if we would have just stayed with Royce manager. So, that will be a discussion we can have together, and that's always the dice you got to roll. Um, whether it be waste management, Rumpke, whoever it may be, there's always going to be a series of, of increases and bids and not bids. Um, but the current contract does allow us, and I think it says mutually, so we would both have to agree to it, both parties. Um, if that's not the case, then we go back out to bid. But I think we should at least honor their renewal numbers and see what that is and, and see what we can do to negotiate off that before we decide say let's put it out to the free market i mean you're going to see increased rates regardless so i think the renewal rates are going to be high just because of the price of gas the price of labor um uh, i mean all the all, all the other environmental factors you know that waste management has to account for 
Um, I'm pretty sure, don't they you pay, pay, pay to dump at your facility, Rumpke? Yeah, so they take to account. But so last it's your, time we it's did your this, fault. Then no, even last time we did fine. this, and you know, <laughs> we only we get two responses usually: waste management, and Rumpke. We go with the lowest and best bid, and that's waste management just undercut them every time. So um, that's just what it comes down to. But should we bid it or renewal will be a group discussion. But we have to see the re renewals numbers first. Now, on top of that, I do want to see those renewal numbers quick because I don't want to take the bid to the last minute. So I kind of want to get that done before mid-summer, to be honest with you, because I got my year projection out. It's going to get real busy towards the end. So dealing with the trash bid is one thing, but here's another scenario. Let's just say we do put it out the bid and another company wins it. Well, we got to give them time to switch, right, switch over. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, so I'm going to be hitting that here pretty soon, but that's definitely a community involvement discussion, at least with council, just because it's going to be over that monetary threshold to spend. Good, Mr. Cook. I'm done. Right. Anyone else? Move to adjourn. Second button. Did you have? Hold on. Did you have something? Yeah. <coughs> um, when we tore down the old substation, we were going to make that into a parking lot, and now it's sitting there with grass that we have to mow. And. I think the reasoning for not taking it when we tore it down was the cost of asphalt. Mm -hmm. But with inflation the way it is, it's not going to go down. So we either need to, we to want it for a parking lot for a fire station, we need to get paid. I would agree. I think when we brought it up, Mr. Kitko said that he would estimate it at around $40,000 and he was going to get us an estimate. I don't think the estimate never came through. Um, but I would agree. I would like to see it paid. Um, Last estimate was $68,000. Really? And the thing is, is, I think we had a discussion. I mean, is it really high on the priority list? That's what I was going to I mean, is it really high on the priority list? You know, that's the thing. Well, you why know. don't we grab it? Hmm? Why don't we grab it? Gravel is worse than pavement. I'd rather just leave it grass because the grass is up to the pavement anyway. You know? But I, I, I don't see them at a, at a, yeah, it's, and I thought too, we had that discussion too about, you know, leaving it grass for a while because there is no immediate need. And then too, maybe look at expanding the fire department eventually at some point in time and then using that lot over there for an additional parking. But um, to me, it's, they don't have a parking issue right now. Um, of course, we'll get fire chiefs and Howie's opinion on it. But I think that was the last round of discussion we have is need versus cost. What do you think, Chief? Is it needed? Right now, we don't. We're, our parking's fine. We were basically looking at that as for additional training area and parking both, you know, that type of thing. But not when I don't have sixty-eight thousand dollars in my budget here. What do you do now? You want to tell them? I so, don't have. I can't spend it for that. <laughs> well, uh, we have the re we have Hey, the I don't care. I just need my three hundred. So, uh, fire chief was going to announce. We're going to announce this next week, but I mean the next council meeting. But fire chief has got some good news. That would maybe free up some funds. So I'll steal your thunder because that's off. But before you before you go to that, I was going to say something on the, on the subject of parking lot. Right I when we first brought it up, I I would like to see the general fund pay for that parking lot. I really would. Sixty-eight thousand dollars. It's not a whole lot of money in the grand scheme. I would rather save our funds in the fire department for fire department needs. I mean, not that a parking lot is not a need uh, when it comes to enough room for them to get their their equipment doing. But, yeah. I would kind of invite council to look at a different way on that. Fire department funds are derived through property tax, where your general fund is income tax based. You know, as we develop these parcels, um, you might get a little bit more property tax. But it is going to capture some. It won't capture the, the renewals that we do after 2006. But any levy prior to that is going to capture. So I think the projections, when I, when I, got it, I don't have it in front of me, the five-year projections on the fire department, five, ten-year projections on the fire department are really, really healthy just because of, of the new stuff coming in. So it's always an option to have. And yes, Mr. Mayor, the general fund could do that. But depending on what that general fund, I mean, the uh, general fund looks like, because I'm curious to know how income tax collections are coming in, because they're starting to kind of level out. We're going to be mellowing out until we see some of that income from the property come in. So, um, but what he's about ready to tell you, it may free up some funds in that fire department that we could use. Um, this year, the fire department, in, as a division, we put in for two FEMA grants, one for the engine and one for air packs and compressors for the station. Uh, last week, we received our official 
uh, letter from them that we were awarded a $172,400 grant for air packs and compressors and compressor. Out of that amount, we will receive $164,190.47. Our responsibility will be $8,209.53. We already have way more than that in our budget already for to cover that and whatever additional. Uh, what this will do, it'll buy 19 new air packs and extra cylinder for each pack and mask and it will also purchase a, a new compressor to fill those air packs because you can't just use a like a broad compressor to fill them it has to be a certain type of compressor and it, it's inspected twice a year for air control and all that uh, but this is a big this is the biggest grant that the division has ever received in this district um, I give a lot of kudos to assistance from Gallagher who did a lot of legwork for this and a lot of uh, time but um, and the equipment that's being bought with this is equipment that will be here for 10 to 15 years so um, right now we're looking at three different uh, companies to buy the air packs through and that type of thing but this will the biggest thing is it puts our air packs our firefighters and air packs that are up to date modern technology um, they'll have heads up displays they'll have speaker modules in their masks where they can can hear each other um, and the, sh the show right now one air pack is $7,200. Is that with an extra bottle? Huh? Is that with an extra bottle? Yes. $7,200 bucks. And that's ah, that right now is the, the, that's the lowest bid. <laughs> what were they 20 years ago? 3000 no, 40 years ago. Oh, 40 years. <laughs> well, that's about the time I was on. <laughs> Anything else, Chief? <coughs> What's that? All right. I think we're going to this media hour. Don't worry, my stomach put in. That's your. Bye. Yeah, we're not uh, but like I said, no, it's, it's, a, it's a big win for us. Uh, as far as the engine grant, that's still up in the air, shot in the dark. We, have got, we haven't got our notice yet, so uh, we're hoping that this, like I said, this is a big win for us. Uh, puts a lot of, puts a lot of relief off of us to know that we're going to be able to put brand new equipment mm -hmm. on firefighter backs and know that's uh, up to date. Because right now our air packs that we're using are unrepairable. They're old enough to where if they go bad, they're bad. Right. Okay. And one of the things I should have stressed before, Mr. Mayor, about dressing who the uh, funds are going to pay for that. Um, the reason I directed that back to the fire because we're looking to pave Hensley Park and we're trying to find a funding source for that. The parking lot of Hensley Park um, coming into town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it always gets gravel and all that stuff. So that's an estimate I think about 45 on that. So we're trying to figure out what funding source okay. is going to pay for that. So okay. lots of pavement needed for sure. I have no idea. Okay. All right. The chief, good news. Congratulations. Good, good job. Good. Everybody deserves it. You and your team do. So good job. Thank you. Fantastic job. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Sir. There's a motion on the floor. Anyone else? You I call for Ms. Eggleston good. All right. Good vote. Please. Councilman Cook? No. What? Was the motion? Don't want to I don't know what the motion to push forward to be so honest with you. Motion to adjourn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ready to stay here the rest of the night. No, uh, you're wrong. Uh, yes, ma'am. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grant? Yes. We had a motion Councilman on the floor, Vaughn? The one yes. you made. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 6 oh. 1. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>